Do you ever get that strange feeling that's sort of like happiness, but also not happiness, when you realize that other people are just as miserable about something as you are? Well, that was sort of my response to the last video and the comments, which was great. Nice to hear from people. But while I was uh, self-soothing reading the comments, there was one set of comments that stuck out to me and made me concerned. And it was the dreaded, LOL, you're a YouTuber, you're gonna go back anyways. First of all, I am not a YouTuber. I am a man that speaks into an empty void on the internet. And secondly, and that's just the point of this video, I just realized there's nothing left to go back to. What are you gonna go back to? Bobby burnt it all down. So in this video, I'm gonna go through a quick timeline of why that comment can't possibly be true and how Bobby burnt down Blizzard. So while researching this video, I was trying to pinpoint the moment, the moment where it was definitely all gone, the moment where the villain had won, and the moment where there was just no turning back. And it didn't take a lot of reflection to realize what that moment was. Plans to make this playable on PC, or is this strictly mobile forever? Uh, are there any, uh, yeah, this, this, the current plan. Do you guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys that, all have phones, phone, right? You can play on your tablet too. Yes, it's also. But while that moment is in my mind, the most memorable of just how detached and horrific the company had become, you got to really appreciate just how great a narrative, just how good a story there is to tell about how Blizzard just imploded and burned down like a house of cards with gasoline and Bobby Cockdick is snubbing out his cigars. And then, okay, I'm going to stop with that metaphor. But anyways, let's get into it. Okay, it's impossible to tell this story without talking about the huge disappointment that was Battle for Azeroth, the one World of Warcraft expansion other than Dragonflight that I never played. Why didn't I play it? Because even I could see the writing on the wall. And even my World of Warcraft addiction could not compel me to play Battle for Azeroth. So I was out, out, out E5000. What do the kids say these days? I didn't play it. It was bad. But it only sort of prefigured bad things to come. We came around then and everyone was expecting updates on the state of Battle for Azeroth or maybe an announcement of a new Diablo game that surely would turn out to be good. And instead, we got the release of Diablo Immortal. So you just saw. And, you know... That wasn't great, was it? No. But, you know, <laughs> there's going to come a great Diablo game later that's going to redeem all this, right? Surely they can't abandon the IP to a mobile game. Not long after that, in December, Blizzard would announce that they were killing Heroes of the Storm, literally axing a fake pro scene that they created. Young men and women that devoted their lives to a game based on the fact that Blizzard were backing it suddenly found themselves unemployed. I actually really freaking loved Heroes of the Storm. Uh, you know that orc org character that two players could play at once? I had to play with my buddy in ranked. So much fun. Great game. Underrated. Killed. Didn't get the support. Had they let the game develop organically and provided the right level of funding that would have been fine but instead they had to throw all the money at it and then just kill it when it wasn't working out the ethics are bad on their own but just from an esports perspective it was also stupid now meanwhile there's some simmerings some some murmurings in the background that uh Blizzard, for this gaming company that we all know and love, may not be the kind of place you want to work. By 2019, it had laid off 800 employees, and there have been several twitlongers of various former employees accusing them of bullying, discrimination, etc., etc. But, I mean, it can't be that bad. It's Blizzard, right, guys? Now, as an official CCP shill who's actually done work for the Chinese government, yeah, I... I actually voice several subway lines in China. I could be accused of being somewhat pro the Chinese government, which I'm not, but people have accused me of it, you know, family and friends, etc. You know, when you take money from people. But that's nothing compared to what Blizzard did. I mean, we all know the story, right? When they literally tried to cancel a Hearthstone player named Blizzchung 
for supporting Hong Kong's protest movement. At a certain point, you just have to ask what the hell they were doing. In this modern era of digital media, one of the things you definitely find hard to do, just because the way these social media algorithms work, is manage to both, both piss off the right and the left in equal measure. And Blizzard just seemed to be able to do that. The sexual harassment here, fire people here, support the CCP here. They, they just, they're, clearly, there's no leadership, and there hasn't been for a while. And then, while all this is surging, Warcraft 3 Reforge gets launched. And, uh, do we need to say anything about that? Not only did they give us a remastered version of the game that was absolute garbage, made by a studio that wasn't even in-house, they also ruined the original version of the game and removed all support for it, which is ironic because if you play Warcraft 3, I do, I don't play it a lot, but I do play it. They had actually began to patch the original version of the game in the lead up to Warcraft Reforged, which was great. And then they shanked it like a prisoner in a bathroom. And I'm, I'm going to stop this metaphor before I get reported or something. It's bad. It's what's, it was very bad. So, I mean, that gets us more or less up to the timeline of bad things that have happened because now we've had the sexual discrimination lawsuit. And, uh, oh, yeah, Overwatch 2 isn't really Overwatch 2. Uh, what else is there? Oh, and Diablo 4 is boring. That's it. There's nothing left. There's nothing left. World of Warcraft ha is basically on life support now, consisting of a community of mostly RMT and real-world trading. Diablo 4 is isn't really an ARPG that I think any real ARPG fans are going to play for very long because it's just just too simplistic. Diablo 2 came out when I was what? I don't know. Quite young. And Diablo 2 is an infinitely more complex game in terms of character builds, loot progression and stuff than Diablo 4 is. Path of Exile is on the rise right now, I really think, because a lot of people got back into the ARPG genre because of uh, Diablo 4, and they were like, this stinks, and they looked around for other things. There's Last Epoch, which I think is doing really well. So Diablo 4, I think, is, is going to die. I think it's going to die pretty darn fast. I think it's going to die even faster than Diablo 3 if they don't step in and completely revamp certain things about the game. I'm definitely not going back for Overwatch 2 or Overwatch 3 or Overwatch 4 or whatever other random number they try to put on the game because it doesn't matter. So that's that's out of the question. I'm not going to buy the new StarCraft or Warcraft 3 RTS because Blizzard don't make RTSs because the sick corporate brains that sit at the top of that corporation look at that IP and the only thing they can think of is, wait, could we make a mobile game out of, like, one of these IPs? Because Diablo 4 Immortal is doing really well. That's it. That's Blizzard. They've killed everything. Bobby Coctic came in, and he burnt the whole place down. And I bet you, when once the Microsoft takeover happens, and it, I think it will happen now, it's looking from the legal news like it will, he'll leave. Just like the Joker walking out of that hospital, boom, he came in, he blew it all up, and now it's over. Peace.